Ni tú más. Okay, so I'm Trent. Hi. Um, if you're on Lions, you probably know me as Galapagos. Uh, it's the only place that I still use that name. <laughs> um, today's kind of an experiment. I don't know. Uh, oh, amazing. I love everybody in the chat room. This is cool. That's so cool. Um, it's just going to be a bit of an exploration. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we're going to try and explore some ASL, explore writing some weird scripts, uh, hopefully to make some music. Um, this is my, my modular. It's not, uh, it's not because I want all this stuff. This is all the stuff that was broken that I fixed. Um, and then I didn't feel comfortable shipping out to somebody. So I just kept it for myself. So, uh, well, this is some of those things. That was a lot of those things over time. Okay. Um, so, where are we? Cool. Um, how do I do this? Like that. Let's use a different color. This is nice. Oh! There's a weird... Uh, masking thing going on. Let me change that. Screen capture. The main reason I've been like really excited about using Twitch is just that I saw um, the open open spaces. Open space? Oh, I'm sorry. An open space. That's it. Uh, and I thought it looked so cool. So I was like, I gotta do something like that. Anyway, here we are. Um... So, uh, how, how does it look? Um, back to front here. Yeah, cool. So, this down here is just a text editor, and then above me is a is an instance of Druid. Um, so with this stuff, uh, Druid's going to talk to Crow, which is hiding in here in the case. Um, I'm absolutely certain that the firmware on it is not the production firmware, so I'm sorry when things uh, uh, aren't quite right. I might reflash it at some point, depending on how far we get. Um, but we should just get started. So to do that, I'm going to make a quick patch. Um, ooh, I can even change to a different view. <gasps> Sorry, I'm like, I'm more excited about this than anybody should be. Um, and I'm too disorganized that I didn't pull the patch apart before we started. So. Satisfying. So we're just gonna start. What should we use? I guess a mangrove. Yeah, let's do pitch and it'll be great. Okay, there's some sound. Cool. Wow, there's so many people in the chat room. Sorry, I'm just excited about this. It's good to be excited. Cool. So let's just start with Druid. Uh, so theoretically, theoretically, we should be able to make this uh, this envelope open. Also, I love this clicky keyboard in the microphone. It sounds sounds funny to me. Um, yeah, can you hear that? Sound. Cool. All right. So that's 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 the beginning. So the first thing we're gonna do. 
Um, wait, wait, I gotta change this view back. Here we go. Um, maybe I'll make this a bit bigger. Uh, I'm using a super fun window manager, so. Maximize. Cool. So, uh, what we're doing here um, above is. I hope I hope uh, hope this is making is gonna make some sense because I'm gonna assume that you know a little bit about Crow. Um, if you don't, I'll give you the quick run through. So it has two inputs and four outputs, and you can kind of use this program called Druid to just talk to them directly. Um, so what this what we're gonna write here is I'm writing. On the, talking to the second output, which is the, the green cable down here, um, it's controlling the volume on Mangrove, the air control. Um, and we're going to basically give it a, uh, we're going to tell it to be an attack release generator, um, which is a function. And we can call it like this, mm. and it will create the sound. Um, we can do fancier stuff than that, like this attack release, it, it can take an attack and a release time. So we can make it be a 0.1 second attack and a really long, oh, I need a comma, a really long release. 10 whole seconds. Mm. All right. So, so I'm just, just checking, checking that we're, we're all good to go. Let's, Let's just roll. roll. I'm, I'm recording, recording this, so in case we, you drop out, we'll be able to watch it later. Um, so, so today, really what I want to talk about is, is the piece uh, here. This piece. Attack release. Um, we're going to make it more fun than that, but that's, uh, that's our starting point. So, um, I'm going to move to the... <laughs> My screen is, is let's just quit out of here. Oh, we're already in. Cool. So I'm going to use um, a new new text file. We're going to call it um, let's call it Twitch. Uh, maybe I already have that. Anyway, uh, it's in my folder called Bowery. But so there's a there's a bunch of scripts available for Crow in a package called Bowery, and I'm just I just use that as my like working directory. So um, let's go back to that nice color way. Um, okay, so uh, in ProScript, typically you have an init function, um, which looks like this. We do stuff in here. Um, and then once the script has been loaded, like Crow will automatically call this function. So we don't have to put it in there. But this is where we like um, start stuff. So. Um, How, what's the best way to do it? Use a metro. Does that sound good to everybody? Um, see if I can remember this. <laughs> um, I probably can't. So we should just use the input, which I do remember. Uh, Cables are too sharp. Okay, so I'm just clocking the first input of Crow. We're clocking with um. We're clocking with just friends. Sorry, I keep getting distracted reading the reading the chat room. But let's let's just focus for a sec. Okay, so how we're going to use that is we say input one, which is the first input here. Um, the simplest way is to, I think we can just write that. So we're setting the mode of the first input to be change, which says when it changes state from high to low. Um, and then in order to implement that, we write a small function down here called change. Um, this has a direction. Um, function. 
Uh, and all we're going to do inside of here is we're going to call that same function. Let's just do it exactly the same. Let's say attack release. Um, now, in Druid, we're going to run the file called Bowery Twitch. Ooh. Oh, this is because I've run this from the wrong directory. And hopefully we can love this. <laughs> now, can anybody spot the problem? Um, I do just like this. I'm, I'm just hoping for the best right now. I'm not so sure. Um, we can. Let's see if we're getting anything. Apparently not. Apologies that I didn't check this in advance. Can anybody look at... Hey, there we go. Alright, so that's pretty... that's pretty boring. So let's stop that. Um, but now we know it works at least. Um, I can just stop the clock. Great. Okay, so... <laughs> now we can get rid of this. Hi. And so what we're doing here is taking that event that's happening every time there's a pulse. I moved it to input two. I think there might be something wrong. I don't know. Um, ooh, what does the change mode bit? Okay, so change is looking for, it's essentially looking for a gate. Um, and it'll create, it'll call into this, this, event, this function down here um, whenever the state of the input goes above or below a threshold. Um, and typically, there's something which rattles on your desk. Um, oh yeah, everything. I'm sorry, I'll try and be gentle. Mm. Yeah, so basically it's looking for a above and a below. Um, it'll probably be... It has like a default, it's set to half a volt or something. Um, or maybe it's one volt now, we changed it at some point. Um, but yeah, just looking for a gate signal. So um, it's going to call this function. And so every time that's going, I think only when it's going high, um, you can configure that to be only high, only low, or both high and low. Uh, and in that case, this uh, D, this direction parameter will change. Um, so OK, now that we have that, um, all we're doing every time is just calling this attack release function. But let's call some, let's, uh, let's write our own. So let's make an let's make an uh, LFO. I'm going to call it LFO two because there's already a default one. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a function called LFO two. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to return us something. And this something is what we're going to write. Uh, so this something is going to be an an ASL uh, construct uh, or script or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to write it, and then we'll talk about it, and talk about what it is, and what it means, and what it's for. Um, so we're going to make a loop, because an LFO is like a loop. It does things in a cycle. Um, and we're going to use this special function called two. And two, two is special because it talks to the physical hardware on Crow. It says, um, go towards this destination. Um, oh yeah, there, yeah, sorry, my, my computer doesn't like writing all these programs at once, it's got turning the fan. Um, two, yeah, we say, what we're going to say is we want to go to a voltage. So what I want to do is I want to go to 5 volts. Um, 
and I want to go and I want to take uh, one second to get there. We can just say one. Um, and because it's a loop, we want to probably do more than one thing, especially um, with two, you kind of have to do more than one thing. Um, so we're going to go two five volts, and then we're going to go again, two negative five volts. And let's do it in one second as well. And we're going to close it using curly braces, um, which is kind of typical with uh, with all the ASL constructs. Um, and there's only a few of them, but we'll get to that. Um, they all use curly braces. So let's save this and let's see if we got it right. Now the, the speed is too fast. The trick here is we only had to call it once, right? So every time that thing is changing, we're like starting it again. So let's uh, let's take it out of this input change and let's just put it up here. We're just going to call it once when we start when we start the uh, script. Something like that. This sounds nice. We can, so why don't, I'm going to turn that down for a sec. Um, what, what do we want to do? We Should we make two of them? Should we make it, I don't know. Let's, uh, like, like losing, losing I can't see my cursor, cursor in this, on this color scheme. It's very frustrating. So let's, um, I'm going to use the third output to use the existing other just to spice things up while we talk. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, so yeah, um, the idea of ASL is inside of ASL is essentially just a uh, set of functions to make these two functions happen over time. Um, so typically, when you write a program, you're going to have like the sequential steps. You're going to have do this, then do this, then do this. Um, the problem is having things happen at some point in the future, um, it becomes a little complex and you usually have to use callbacks or an event system or something else. So um, like there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and so as, a, as another example, the same kind of idea, um, we use this like this input change idea is a, a setting. You basically say like the input, um, the input should do the should be in this state, such that when it receives a gate high or a gate low, it will do this thing. And that's saying at some point, sometime in the future. Um, what we want to do with ASL is something a little more specific, which is to say I want to do this thing at this point, and then when it's finished, I want to immediately do this next thing. Um, so ASL is really just a, a way to allow that to happen. Um, in Lua, you, you can do that with coroutines, and that's what the, the new Norns clock system uses. It's very cool. If you haven't seen if any Norns users haven't seen it, it's really exciting. Um, and this is similar. It's just like giving some names to um, kind of programming constructs. So... The word loop is very similar to like a while loop. I mean, it's essentially a while loop. That's what it does under the hood. Um, but you just kind of think of it in a different way. Um, oh yeah, somebody, a DAH 
S R L R T D A S R. We can make one of those later. Yeah, there. It's like that's that was kind of the idea for this. Mm. So initially, when I wrote it, I wanted to come up with names for the constructs that um, allow you to describe every typical kind of synthesis uh, modulation. Um, so I wanted to be able to describe LFOs, um, envelope generators like ADSRs. Um, and many other, I don't, I don't know, is there other things? All the basics, basically. <laughs> um, so that you could do it in like a unified way, in like a really concise way as well. Um, so to me, this feels really pretty nice for, a, for an envelope, uh, an LFO, rather. Um, we can add some parameters in here. So we want to be able to set the speed, or the, the time makes more sense, of the LFO. Um, and so what we can do there is instead of this number one, we can say time. Um, you'll note here that we're using time twice, so it'll take two times through to play the whole cycle. So we can divide it by two, um, which means we can now change this to, let's say one, we should double the speed, I think. Perhaps I'm incorrect. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> what is the return value of 2? That is a good question. It's a... Uh, 2 returns a function. function. It returns a function that um, will, in the future, tell the underlying C layer to like go and do a thing. Um, I would do that. Oh, hi Taylor, nice to see you. Um, so we can go. I, it's 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 all in this in the source if you want to look at it. Um, oh my god, this looks scary. This is the two function. This is what happens when you call two. And what it will return is this, a function um, that will call this function, which this low level toward function, this basically calls into C and says, um, for this slope, um, go to this destination in this amount of time with this shape. We'll get to shapes in a second. But that is how, essentially how it works. Um, has anybody figured out why this isn't working? What is wrong with our function? Right, does this? To me, this should be working. I'm very confused. broke it though because I changed it down here. I'm so confused. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like that should work, yeah. All right, so I just reset it because something wasn't working right. Um, there we go. Okay, we're good. So let's put this time back in here. That should stay the same. And then 
Something certainly wacky is going on, and I do not know why. Will you, uh, you'll bear with me for a second, right? Oh, is this even gonna work? I don't have a power source. Oh, I always forget that, like, you can upload the firmware without having to plug a programmer in. So... Let's do that really quickly. Um, B? Is that bootloader? Somebody can tell me this. I hope so. <laughs> um, uh, let's run it. Uh, it's going to try and flash it, but that will not work. The digital bathroom. E bathroom. That's a good name for an album. You should put that on that on that thread. Mm. Oh, unknown memory region. That's great. That means we can retire make the FD. Yeah, this is how you upload the firmware. <laughs> uh, it's slightly different if you don't have the, the development tool chain set up, but um, that's something. All right, we've been doing this for half an hour. I, I sh should I pick up the pace? Probably. We'll do some more interesting stuff. Tells me, yeah. So big shout out to CS Bolling for adding these beautiful error descriptions, um, which make it so much easier to debug a pro program. <laughs> okay, love that. There we go. So the problem was indeed that I had not defined um, the parameter. So what that's doing is it's taking this number 1.4 and it's passing it in to the LFO2 function. Uh, and then we're using that and then we're dividing it by 2 to get the total time to be equal to time. Of course, you can, um, you can divide that differently. This is a very weird way to divide it differently. Like to get a, like a sawtooth wave. Um, and there's even some functions in the ASL lib which give you kind of like pre-baked versions of these uh, that do that. Um, okay, so now that we're back in business, we should uh, we should do that. It feels like being at work. I kind of feel the same way, even though like this is more enjoyable than regular work. I think. Um, okay, so we made a loop. Uh, that's like a, a fancy ASL construct. We can just get rid of it. And now it'll run once. Um, so you can see how that basically all we did was we defined a sawtooth. Um, and then we said, once the sawtooth is finished, go back to the start and play it again. Um, that, to me, that's kind of like a, a nice way of being able to describe things. I like that. Um, so, of course, we're not limited to two twos in here. You know, we can make it a, a full shape. Um, so, we can go to big voltage, 8 volts, down to negative 5, and then let's go to 2. And we can just put in a real time here. And then, wow, let's do a fourth one. We're going to go up to, all the way up to 10, 
and do a front one. And then one thing you can do is you can go to a value, let's say zero volts, so again back to zero, um, in zero seconds. And that will make it run instantaneously. So, well, as, as fast as the computer can run. Um, so it won't, it'll like do this line and then it'll immediately go and try and do the next thing. Um, which I think is what you would expect. Seems like that didn't work. <laughs> Classic. Um, maybe it's because it was, it's not looping. I don't know. I think that fixed it. Maybe it was too fast of a time. I'm not sure. Um, but the point is, this can be. This is a loop as well. You can loop this as well. Um, I'm kind of insistent about using this particular indentation because it makes me see that it's just a sequence of steps. Um, but obviously, you can just write it like a normal function or a table. Um, An oscilloscope. I would, but it's it's over there. Uh, over there. Next time, if we we'll do it again, and I'll, I'll get the scope out. But you, you know, that's the sound here. So it's like a weird LFO. It's an LFO with uh, five stages. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of it's cool you got you have a, a pretty customizable lfo that's exciting um but we can do other stuff with asl as well so one thing we can do is we use this construct called hell um but let's get there by starting again oh, we can say. um gonna make a new function which is gonna be an adsr function we're gonna call two again because there's, just, there's one in the standard library um, no arguments to stop. Um, and we're gonna basically, we're just gonna use this uh, output two, which is just gonna drive the, uh, the volume. So, all right, so that's, interestingly, that's making an LFO happen. I think that's because this is undefined. It should return something, but it's not. Um, and so as a result, it's using whatever was previously defined, which is a standard LFO. Um, but that doesn't really matter for now. Let's put in the function two. Okay, so now we went back to zero volts. Um, turn this volume down. Okay, so let's make an ADSR. So in order to do that, we have three stages that are about time and one stage that's about volume. Um, well, yeah, three stages um, and four parameters, one of which is about uh, volume. Mm. I'm going to come back to these comments, so don't get distracted. Um, so let's, let's just talk about it. So we could say we have... Um, the first thing we're going to do is we want to go to, let's say, 5 volts. Um, this is kind of customizable as your um, amplitude. Um, and we want to go in, let's say, 0 0.1 seconds. Um, so that's uh, attack. Now we want to decay. Um, so we can decay. We need to go to a value. So this would be our sustained value. Let's call it 2 volts. Um, and then we want to go in a certain amount of time, we're going to say, let's say 0.3. So that's um, okay and sustain. And then we want to go to zero volts and let's do that in like two seconds, like a nice slow release. So, um, you can barely hear that. So you get that really quick attack, and then it comes down, like goes up really loud, comes down to a mid midish level, and then like takes a long time to sustain up. Um, we can make that a bit more clear. 
Wow, I gotta change this cursor, it's ridiculous. Five seconds in, let's make this 20. We'll never hear the end, but. So we come down to two bolts, and we're gonna sit there, and we're gonna really slowly slide down to 20. Okay, so that's. Um, that's the structure of an ADSL, but we don't have the behavior of being um, sensitive to like a key sustain. Um, so in order to do that, let's get the input back in control of the ADSL. Um, so we're using input two. Um, we're going to turn this change mode back on. Um, So we're going to change. I'm going to change this lineup here. Um, at the moment, it's um, it's both setting the ASL function of the second output and, and making it start at the same time. Um, this is a shortcut essentially. But what we're going to change it to, I'll leave this as a reference. Um, we're going to change it by saying we're going to set the action of output to to be ADSR2. And so that's going to say, whenever you get called, whenever the ADSR, whenever the ASL function gets called, um, we're going to execute the function ADSR2. Um, and in order to execute that function, um, we would do, there's a couple ways you can write it. You can, you can call the action as a method, um, but it's much easier as a shortcut to just call the output table. And that will basically execute uh, whatever action is assigned to the table, to the output, uh, the output table. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that call and we're going to put it inside of the input change event. Um, and so what that means is every time the input changes, um, we should theoretically trigger the ADSL. Um, so let's see if that works. Mm. It worked once. No, I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I'm going to hand wave past that because I'm not entirely sure what happened. Um, so. Not only can you call an output table to make it start, um, you can also uh, pass it what we call directives. Um, so without anything, it will just say start the start the ASL. Um, but you can pass it other things. You can say things like um, restart um, and. What else is there? I think next step. Um, there's a bunch. They're kind of they're mostly used for debugging and for other things. There's a couple very specific ones though um, that are really useful. And one of them is being able to pass it true and false values. And they kind of function as um, as like a gate. You say like you you typically use it to say. If it's true, then you're going to be doing a certain thing, and when it goes false, you want to jump in to do something else. Um, so for right now, we can pass it the value. When we pass it the value true, it's essentially going to be like an attack, um, and that's why. Um, this is happening now. This is actually happening. You, I don't know. You probably can't see. Um, let's see if. Uh, Maybe, I don't know, the stream's too bad, but there's a light here. <laughs> it's the second channel, um, which is basically linked. You, you can't see it. But basically, uh, every time it goes high and every time it goes low, it's creating this, um, this effect. So that says to me that we're actually we're being sensitive both on the rising and the falling stage at the moment. Um, so what we can do, we can update this change function here. Um, so when we when we do this input change thing, um, 
There's a number of different ways to write that. This is the most basic that gives you the default value. Um, but instead of doing it as an assignment, we can call a function. Um, and the first value is going to be which mode. And then you have some kind of per mode settings. So one of those things um, for, um, wait, we can do it slightly differently. Yeah, this is even better. You can call the table just like we did with the ASL. Um, and we're inside of that, we can give it a table of parameters. So we're going to set mode to be changed, and we're going to set the direction to be rising. And if we run that, um, Uh, you can't see it, but it's basically only happening when we're rising now. It's not happening also when the when the gate's falling. Um, I realize we actually don't need that. We can take we can just use the standard uh, the standard behavior. So that's twice as fast now because it's rising and falling. And what we'll see in here is we can print the direction, and we should see true, false, true, false, true, false. Um, now that's really good for us because that's basically how you want to control an ADSL. Um, so let's stop that for a sec. So in order to, um, in order to make this actually into an ADSL, we need to add one more construct and that's what's called held. Um, and so basically held is a helper to say, Whenever the directive is true, um, proceed through the whole sequence as normal. Um, when you get to the end of the held, wait until held is until uh, the directive has turned to false, um, and at that point, kind of move on. It also does some other fancy stuff, which is to say that if you change it halfway through, it'll be able to jump over the rest of the held and immediately do what's after it. So that looks something like this. So you see we just kind of indented there and like wrapped the attack and the decay sustain inside of held. Um, and uh, we hope now that um, that should work for us. Oh, so one thing we're going to need to change is line 14 here. This true value, um, we need to change it because we don't want to pass true, we actually want to pass it the direction. Um, so we can just say output to duh. So it's taking the direction from the input um, as being an attack and a release. So let's try it out. Let's see if this is indeed correct. So, uh, this is probably going to be easier. Check this out. Oh, we can... I never have stack cables. They're so useful, but I, I always lose them. So hopefully you can hear, I added some extra modulation so you can hear it doing the different stages, but we can also change the pulse width on Just Friends. To make it kind of jump forward faster. But what's happening is it's not actually finishing the decay stage. So it's, it's doing the attack and then like the, the gate's going low and so it instantly jumps to the release, um, but from a high about voltage, which is why you get that sound. I think a lot of a lot of synths work that way. Um, you can you could code that differently in the ASL, um, but you would would use a different construct, which we'll get to. Um, we can go the other way though. So this is basically um, a really long high gate and then a very short gap. So it's holding in the sustain phase. It's doing the attack, the sustain, and then waiting at sustain, and then falling off. 
Um, but yeah, that's like a that's a basic ADSL. And the cool thing is, um, let me get rid of this. Uh, you can write this. I think you can write this whole thing in like three lines, because um, there's an ADSR function. Um, so this kind of stuff's really um, it's kind of designed to be like really easy to use, at least hopefully. Um, the synth audio is really quiet. I'll turn it up um, when we get back. Um, I think. The nice, yeah, so a lot of the defaults are kind of set up so that all you have to do is like, uh, yeah, I mean, this is basically it. We'll delete this. Um, if you want to, there's like a, in, in Crow, there's, there's this thing called ASL lib, and it gives you some of these type of ASLs for free. Um, you don't have to write them yourself. And one of them's called ADSR. Um, and what you can do is just, you basically set the input to the change. Um, you set whichever output you want to be ADSR. Um, you apply the action. And all you have to do to make it uh, into a full ADSR is just um, like these three lines. So basically telling that input to pass its direction into the, um, into the ASR. Um, so I don't know, that's like a nice little one. It's like nicely collapsed. I think what, what ASL is cool for is like being able to like really specifically articulate um, everything that's going, like specifically articulate the modulation you want and then be able to kind of forget about how it works. I mean, that's that's kind of what programming is to me in general. So I don't know, that's, uh, that's something. Okay, give me a sec, I'm gonna read these, uh, all of this chatter. It's really funny that you're talking about the color scheme. I like spent like three hours trying to figure out this background yesterday. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's like just changing my, like the background of my whole computer is just changing every 0.1 seconds or something stupid. But yeah, this, uh, I like this Vim colorway. It's so stupid that I like it. It looks like a post-it note. How does held get the duh value? Um, that happens inside of the ASL library, and it's kind of yeah. That's like a that's an inherent quality of the of the ASL library. It's basically if you pass directives into into ASL, which so that's why it makes more sense. Um, where are we? Cool. Um, this line 10, this would make more sense if we wrote it the not shorthand way, which is to say output to dot ASL action. Um, so basically the ASL table is owned by the output table, um, and then they're basically like smashed together to say um, these two things are kind of automatic, and then the action is basically what happens when you call an ASL table. Um, an action is a method that takes uh, takes an argument, and that can be a whole ASL. If it's a whole ASL, it'll run it immediately, which is why um, why before we could say output to and do a table call, we can pass in the whole ASL, and it'll say, oh, it's a directive, but my directive is actually a whole ASL. I should assign it and start it. Um, but you can also send these other words, and then they're basically passed and parsed and if it's a boolean value, 
that is basically taken and put into the ASL table's um, state variable for whether or not held is true or false. And then that kind of the the bit in the background that runs the that runs the DSP loop is is going to kind of take that and be like, oh, cool, okay, um, I get to move through held or do whatever else it is. Uh, that was one response. People are asking about um, nesting ASL and doing cross-modulation. Um, you can't do it currently, but I'm working on some stuff that's kind of in that vein. Um, excuse me, it gets a little difficult to reason about at some point, I think, which is why like module is really cool, but oftentimes it's cool because you don't have to understand why it works. I think coding can be difficult like that, like if you put yourself in that position. But you can have one ASL talk to multiple outputs, and we'll get to that in one second. It looks super easy to write a 28-stage woggly LFO to give pseudo-random movement for modulating parameters. That is very true. Yeah, so we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about passing in values at runtime. Um, and that's, we're going to write a sequencer. It's almost five. Yeah, we got time. I'm going to grab a book so I don't forget all this stuff I'm meant to talk about. Um, or maybe in the spirit of my color scheme, a post it note. So we want to talk about um, multiple outputs. Um, variables at runtime. Oh, the reason I was talking about the background is that I haven't really prepared very well for this because I spent too many hours yesterday figuring out why the background color change wasn't working. <laughs> variables at runtime. Working on a Lua project with a lot of shorthand. Yeah, Lua's, Lua's really good at that. Um, it makes it really... Uh, it makes it very easy to kind of do DSL-like things, which is what ASL is kind of thinking about. Um, if the direction changes slightly above average J, if the direction changes before the end of the 2, 2, 0 0.3, it will immediately move on to the next step. I'm not sure. Um, that's something that having like the immediate stuff is something I'm kind of working on. I think it might actually work though. Um, we can test that. Let's, let's do that. So, We'll test it by making these values really, um, really long. So let's just say if the attack is 10 seconds, it's going to take forever to get there. But then we'll leave everything else. Um, we should be able to hear that. I have to run it first. It's because I changed this. It's instant. So you can hear it's starting to rise. And then as soon as the gate goes low, it's uh, it's switching. So it hasn't finished the attack stage. And halfway through the attack stage, it gets a, it gets a false directive. And it'll, it'll start going down immediately. So yes, it works uh, straight away. Let's 
still too much of a weenie for them. We're, we're all too much of a weenie for them. I just use it for uh, masochistic purposes. Okay, I'm going to get back to it because I feel like it's very boring watching me read a bunch of comments. Send me an app comment if you have a, if, like, at Trentley, if you want to do a very, if you want to ask a specific question about what's going on. Otherwise, I'll, like, read it later. Um, but please, ask questions if you have them. Um, okay, so there's, there's a couple more things. Oh, there's, there's two more. There's only four constructs in ASL, so it's really just different ways of figuring out this two, uh, how to use the, the function two and, like, move it around. Um, so let's start with that. I'm going to push that stuff down the bottom. So I don't even think about it anymore. Uh, I can upload this later if, you, if anybody wants it. Um, okay, so let's do, let's do a lock. Um, so that's, we're going to make a new function called, is this really going to be any good? Yeah. Locked AR. So I'm sorry, we haven't been passing in arguments, but I'm going to do that immediately after this. Because um, I think that's when it gets more interesting. Um, but this is more to kind of talk about how to structure, um, how to just write ASL and what it actually means to write one. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to lock A2 to 5, five volts. Um, to five volts, and it's going to take five seconds. No, it's going to take one second to get there. It'll be like a a ramp. Um, uh, and we we need to do two things here. So we're going to do that. Um, so we're, we're, I'm wrapping everything in a table. Um, that's something you're going to need to do. I I think that if it's just a stand, if it's a single two function, you don't have to. But anything else needs to be wrapped, or it needs to be a directive. Like when we're using loop, you could just say loop curly braces. But here we want to sequence two things um, just standalone. So I start the function, I start the return with a table. Um, so we're going to do a, we're going to say lock two five one, um, and then we're going to go to this make sense? I haven't really used this one very much um, because it it actually creates a behavior of some modules that I'm not a big fan of. Um, so that's why I haven't used it too much. But let's see, we haven't assigned it yet. The great irony is I think it's not working. Is that, could that possibly be true? Hmm. Let's forget about this one. <laughs> uh, I should write down that it doesn't seem to be working. The concept um, is to emulate uh, to emulate some old attack, uh, some old function generators, I think both the Buchla 281 and the the Surge DUSG and a bunch of other such stuff. Um, basically, what happens is you send it a, a signal, and when you send it a trigger, it rises. And even if you even if that if you have like another trigger come in and it's still rising, it'll just keep rising. Um, it'll ignore the kind of It'll ignore a really rapid thing, and that's how Just Friends does um, can do pitch division, basically of a of an input clock. Like you, you plug in a trigger that has a faster rate than the total time of the of the cycle, um, and when you do that, basically, you'll get pitch division because it'll do that cycle and then it'll wait. Uh, it'll wait for the next clock 
after the modulation is finished. So you'll get this effect where you'll you'll get really close to it being a, a, a continuous LFO, and then you'll move just past that point, and you'll get a full LFO, and then almost a whole cycle of delay, and then the next LFO. Oh, so it's not it's not an LFO really. It's a it's like a triggered thing, but it has this like um, behavior where it doesn't work. So consistently, and it like specifically allows you to do that kind of trick. Um, it's not working, and I feel like it might be because I've got the idea wrong in my head right now. Um, but let's not worry about it because I kind of there's a bunch of other interesting stuff to talk about rather than try and debug why this is not working. Um, the next one is going to be let's do count. So. Is it called count? Does anybody know? Let's check. Um, this is the source code of ASL. It's only three hundred lines. It's not that, not that well. Times it's called. Um, um, and let's call this three times. So uh, we have a construct, um, and this one I think is special, right? Let's, um, sorry to jump around on you like this. Yes, so th this one is a little different in the syntax. So here we start with a regular parentheses because it's a normal function call. Um, and we're going to say we want to do something n times. Um, we want to do it. So in this case, we're going to do it three times. And then we pass it in the ASL that we want to execute three times. So uh, that could be two, five, in point two, to negative five in point four. Let's just do that. Just doing it all on one line to kind of show how this works. All right, so because this is really fast, It's a little confusing because it's being triggered multiple times. Um, but you, there you hear it, one, two, three. Um, so that basically means that rather than using the loop construct, which is like repeat indefinitely, you can say do this thing only a set number of times. Um, and you can use that in a nested context. And everything in ASL is nestable. So, Let's do something really weird. We're going to loop that whole thing. And then we're going to run 2, 5 in one second. And then 2, negative 5 in one second. And then we're going to loop that. I think this will work. Yeah, there we go. So now we've written like, it's an LFO, but we've written it with some like programming ideas inside of it. So um, we can probably make this look a bit nicer just to make it clearer how this is working. Yeah, so this is a loop. We saw, we saw it with a loop. And so that just says we're making a, a cycling thing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to execute this ASL um, three times. And then we're going to execute this line, then we're going to execute this line, and then we're going to repeat. Um, so that's one way of writing some kind of more programmatic ideas. Um, and I, these values, every value in here can be changed, right? So you could have this number three be set by some other parameter, um, by something in your program. Uh, so that's the that's times. And I might just leave the kind of overview of ASL stuff there, so that we have some time to actually do some interesting stuff. Um, so coming back to this question, there was I want to stop this. How do I do that? Oh, let's see if there's a directive for it. 
I'm not sure if I remember. <laughs> uh, unmatch string. Um, so, reset is something. It wasn't what we wanted. Let's go. Um, not found. Great. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry for all this. Is there a way to stop it? Doesn't look like it. Well, maybe we can change that. One thing we can do, um, if you've used Crow, you probably used this, um, that construct, where, uh, construct, uh, that line of code. Um, so what that is, is it's basically saying output two should go to a voltage of some number, and you can just assign that directly. Um, that is powered behind the hood with an ASL, um, and that allows you to also do this thing with SLU. Um, so now I can go to 5 volts and it'll use that SLU value. And similarly, we could change that SLU to be instant, um, uh, and then come back to zero. Cool. Um, I, I forgot to turn off the synth when somebody told me it was too quiet. There you go. It's probably just too loud in my ears. Okay, so that's how that's how I would stop something in a in a rush. Um, yeah, teletype style. That's exactly right. Uh, what's up, Brian? Okay, so let's. There's a couple weird things you can do. Um, I'm not gonna dwell on them too much, but let's go back. So this is. We're gonna make a. I shouldn't delete that. Let's leave it all push it off the end, and then make a new one. Um, so let's say multi-outs. So this one's going to be a little weird. Uh, so one thing you can do in ASL that's, that is probably not immediately obvious, and I mean, it's definitely not immediately obvious, um, is you can call generic functions inside of this list. But they'll just happen instantaneously. Um, and so that it can look a bit weird, but um, what's one thing we can do? Uh, okay, we're, we're hooked up to this mangrove. So let's make a, f before we write this, we're gonna make a new function, which is uh, flip optic. Um, we're going to keep a variable out here um, called oct, it's going to be zero, um, and I'm going to say, whenever we call flip oct, I'm going to say, if oct equals zero, then oct, well, we can do it with the ternary, oct equals, um, if oct is zero, then it should be one, otherwise it's zero. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, this will let us do a couple things. This will show us the two things I want to show you all. So um, the first is, let's make it do it. will be an LFO again, um, which means we should just um, So I'm, uh, ah, I turned on Syntastic, which tells you when your code's broken, but I know that it's broken. Okay, um, it can be disruptive. So uh, we changed this line six, so we're calling the function directly and we're no longer doing anything inside of our input event. Um, all we're gonna do is we're gonna run this loop, which is going to go to five in one second, this is the same alpha we've been writing again and again. Um, and to negative five in one second. So let's start with that. So there we go, it's our alpha. Um, stop that again. And then what we can do here is we can call another, 
We can call it ASL on another channel. Um, and so I have... I think we can just do this. Output one. Bear with me, I'm just not entirely sure. Um, I think we can just do this. Let's see. doesn't like that. I... Let's make this simpler. We're just going to call the function flip octave inside of loop. And we're going to calculate our octave, and then we're going to apply it to output 1 as a voltage. How's that? It seems like it should work, but as always, these things seem like they should, and they do not. Uh, all right. I'm just trying to make sure that this is actually working as I think it should. Yeah. So let's try and put this function down at the bottom. And let's get rid of this line so that we know it should at least work. Print the opt. Ooh, that's really interesting. And I cannot explain it. Anybody else? Probably not. Um, Alright, so I'm going to say that that's either broken or I'm using the wrong version of ASL right now, I'm not sure. Um, but this general concept should be true. Um, I will investigate why that's not working. Um, so it goes. <laughs> um, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, variables because we, if we talk about variables, we can make a, a sequencer, and I feel like that would be more fun than watching me struggle through figuring out this stuff. So I'm going to just call it seek. Let's, get, let's just pretend that this is going to work. <laughs> so function seek, and we're going to return. Uh, it's going to be an ASL. And this ASL is going to be super weird. It's just going to be a loop of a single two from a single two just to prove this works we're going to change we're going to make it two stages so we're going to go two five in point one and then we're going to go to zero in point one so this uh, cool so we got a basic like zap 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 um, what we can do is we can have a variable out here, um, which we're going to call um, pitch. Let's assign it to be, oh, let's start with level, right? Um, and we're going to assign it to be 5. And so inside of here, we can use that variable as our number, right? Um, the issue is, if I change that, nothing's going to happen. Um, like, it's kind of like, it's been captured for once. So 
when I said that the thing say level equals two, like show level equals two, but the ASL captured the state of the level parameter um, when it was uh, applied to the output. Um, instead, we can pass it a function. And so this is gonna look weird, but I'll hopefully, I'll try and make it look uh, simpler after we prove the point. So I'm, I'm gonna create a function which I'm going to pass as the argument. And all it's going to do is return the value in the level parameter. And so our uh, the destination of our two is going to be a function. And so that means we can change it over time. Um, so we have this one, but now I should be able to change this, this value. So there we go. So now we have dynamic control of, um, oh, I figured that why I wasn't working before, but that's fine. Um, we have dynamic control over a parameter to a two function. So yeah, um, what that means is we can do more fun stuff than just changing a level. Um, I do not own a mouse. I own I have one of these. <laughs> um, let's give that function a name so that we can reason about it separately. So the easiest thing, I'm just going to grab this definition. I'm going to paste it up here. Um, and all we have to do is give this a name. So new level. And then we can make it look more like a normal uh, Lua function. Let's put the level up here. And then inside here, we just put, we don't call the function. This is, this is the mistake I just made. So um, beware here. Uh, you don't want to, Oh, and this is not going to work because that's the parameter, new level. So what we're putting here is we're putting the name of the function, but we're not calling it. You know, typically when you write the function, you would then put the parens after it to make, like, to call it as a function. But in this context, we're passing the function itself rather than the result of the function. Um, and that's a that's a weird special thing. Um, but yeah, so you can do that, and so now. All right, that's going to be exactly the same as we had before, right? And then... Uh, should be, should be, should be. Why is it not? New level, level. Any thoughts? Okay, uh, I think it's because I didn't re... I don't know, it seems like something was messed up. Maybe I'm using the word level somewhere else. Um, I just put an underscore under it to make it uh, unique. So we have this functionality, but we can also do other things. Um, and so that's what I was trying to get at before. I think I should be able to do this. Let's see if this raises the pitch. Yeah, there we go. Um, great. Okay, so that's that's kind of weird, right? I'm, I'm, my parameter isn't just a parameter, it also has side effects. Um, it makes it difficult to think about, but um, if your ASL stays small and tight, then I think it can be okay. Um, but so, of note, I'm controlling both this, this line 16 here. Uh, I'm controlling both the voltage of the first output 
as well as the the destination of the first two in the loop. Um, but let's change this. Let's let's do this something a little different. Uh, we're gonna say the let's make a let's make some notes, right? I'm gonna use my favorite scale. And what we're gonna do is one. We're gonna pass the vaults parameter this, and then we can say note x um, modulo length of notes plus one. I think that'll rotate. Um, we're going to apply that and then we're going to return and we still need that level right? ooh alright so you, you might have noticed that we're sending some really stupid high pitches and that's because I'm using the note number, but I'm applying it as a vault. Uh, so if I just divide it by 12, something like that. It's a sequencer. Um, and it's weird right now because the sequencer is like into like it's interleaved with the um, the pulse. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say uh, how should we do this? This is quite bizarre. Um, I did the same, I made the same mistake. Okay, so I feel like this is getting interesting, right? So a sequence of ASL is a loop. Um, and the first thing the loop does is it selects a new pitch. Um, and this actually sends the new pitch out of the output. And then after that, well, imme immediately, like at the same time, essentially, as the new pitch is where attacking to our new level. And that's something that we can, we can basically change the, the level by changing that in Druid, by changing it in our program. And then we're attacking in point one, and then we're releasing the zero volts in point one. So if we want to make this more like a like a stabby, I think we can do this. And now you can like noodle along on your on your instrument with your very boring major of well, Lydian scale. This is really cool because you could sequence not tied to a clock, rather to modulation lengths. It's true. Uh, sometimes I think ASL is a little weird because you talk about time as a sequence of events. Um, so it's more difficult to have like a, a reliable way of saying, here's the one. 
Um, but it does let you do some some weird things. And I think a, a lot of what's cool about it is you can just trigger these things from a metro. Um, especially if your ASL is like a set of events that happen every clock cycle. And I think like an attack release is a good example of that. Like anytime there's an event in your metro, you can start an attack and when the attack's finished, like go to a release and that can be programmable per step. Um, you can set new pitches, you can even set pitch glides. Um, so we could do that in here. Uh, let's do a pitch glide on this, this sequence. And soon, I'm going to add another uh, instrument in, in a sec, I think. Uh, okay, so pitch glide. The easy way to do that is just to use the slew function. Let's slew in like 0.05. So it should just be a little like whoop whoop. Yeah, there we go. Um, obviously, instead of the direct lookup, we could do a math dot random between uh, up to the value of seven. Oh, so I'm gonna divide it by twelve. And. Basically, our timing is like controlled by the release time down here. I was hoping that ITC was hooked up, but it's not. Um, because there's some cool Just Friends stuff we can do. Uh, so what, one thing you'll note is you can actually, um, inside of our sequence, we can also put I2C calls. Um, so if you have a Just Friends, you can do something like uh, ii.jf.playnote, and this would be I don't really even, I don't even know. Let's say, let's say one, that'll give us an octave up um, and then a velocity of five volts, something like that. Again, this is a function called directly, so you have to wrap it in a function. And so basically what that means is every time, like we'll, we'll cycle through and like we'll get to this line and it will call the function that's there. Um, if we do this now, it'll, it won't do anything because there's no ITC connected. But you can you can add stuff like that in really simply. Um, and I think in the same way, do we have output three? Yeah. So our output three is connected to um, this three sisters over here. So we could add another one. We'll do a function which is going to set. It's going to call on output three the tap release function. Oh, 
Okay, 534. Let me know if you want to hear anything in particular, and want to do anything in particular. I'm tempted to hook up the Just Friends because I want to do some cool, like, poly sequencing stuff. I have another, like, the actual development case is over there, which is hooked up. But I stole the power cable to plug it in. I see an at comment. Is it possible to create and run an ASL that isn't directly associated with an output? Not yet, but I'm. it's like very specifically something I'm working on. Um, for a number of reasons, but one is so that you can use ASLs as modulation sources for ASL parameters. One thing I should mention is that um, when we're doing this stuff in here, which kind of, uh, where are we? Very specifically, this thing here, where a new level is a function that returns a number, uh, that's only going to get called whenever that line in the ASL gets called. So that only gets recalculated every time we hit this. Um, which is important because it means if you're using really long envelope times, you can't change their time constants while it's running. Um, you have to, it basically, it, the update won't be applied until you hit a breakpoint. Like when a two uh, function finishes and calls the next one. Um, that's a limitation that we're working around and there's going to be a different way to approach that soon. But that's kind of a, um, that's a limitation for the moment. Can I do something recursive? Yeah, sure. Let's just have the level count up. Um, wait, that, that's not going to be recursive though. You want to do a recursive call down here? Um, I'm not really sure how I do that to be honest. for doing internal modulation. There's some other stuff I'm working on that, that is kind of, that it is really intended for. But um, I think conceptually, it doesn't have to be tied to an output. It's really just creating a modulation signal. Also, I think ASL, like, it's written for Crow, and like, it exists only on Crow right now, but as a concept, I think you could, uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to see it applied to different hardware, or even in like a software environment. I think it would be really useful. Uh, or something like it, you know, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Well, let's, um... Let's set this release time with random. <laughs> so this is cool because it, um... Math or random without, which is with just an empty call, uh, gives you a random number between 0 and 1. So. Also, on Crow, um, math or random is a true random value. It uses an analog random. Oh, 
Thanks for tuning in, Mickey. Non super random, very cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. This is kind of fun. I like the sequence of it. It sounds like music that I would actually listen to. <laughs> um. Oh, this mixer has reverb. structure maybe Yeah, I'll put up Twitch after this. I'll attach it. Maybe. I'll put it in the comments or something. <laughs> um, macro structures, multiple phrases or nested sequences. Yeah. Um, Yeah, let's do a macro sequence. That sounds like a fun idea. Macro seek. Okay. Um, I missed that comment. Uh, can ASL go to audio rates? Uh, not really. Um, it has to has to call into Lua every time, um, which can, every time it reaches a breakpoint, which kind of is a big overhead, and in the system it kind of like maxes out at about one or 200 hertz. Um, that might change in the future. Turn values, yeah, that's a fun one.
Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is we're going to make a sequence that consists of two sequences that run uh, individually. I'm missing some, uh, some commas here, actually. I'm not sure if the if um the parameter at the times can be a function or not. Um, we can test it out, but for now I'm gonna keep it as a static variable. about shapes yet so why don't we can just use them to make this easier um, okay so sequencer number one I'm gonna comment out this line so we don't have to worry about the first one for now um, and I'm gonna turn just down there so I'm not distracted so we're gonna return uh, we can return uh, multiple values here. So we have um, this function is being called, and what its job to do is to deliver the function to uh, its variables. And so typically in most languages you would just write like two, like we're going to return, you know, we want one out of 12, which is one semitone above zero volts. Um, but in Lua you can have multiple return values, so that could be a semitone up and it could be a timing so it could say one second and it can be a shape uh, say um, expo so this is going to change the, the shape of the curve um, all right something's not happy I'm sorry I turned off the music. <laughs> um, but we'll get there. Okay. Um, in method step, something's not happening. Two. Step seek A. Stack overflow, nice. Oh, is it because it's happening instantly? What's going on?
Oh, I think you can't. Can you not return the little stuff? Is they've all got to return the fun? Ah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm trying to do too much at once. Um, you can return the values into a two call, um, like in here, like this function, step TA, can return up to three values, destination, then time, then shape. Um, but you can't wrap that, that can't be a function that returns those things. It has to have literal values when you write it. So it's not going to work for us in this context. We're just going to use the function to return um, only a pitch and then we're going to give it a time explicitly which should we which can change uh, in future. Okay, so that should get us back to a functioning situation. Um, so we're going to say to this value in some fixed time. Okay, now we're not, yeah. Oh, I was calling it? Yeah, yeah, I had to do that on purpose um, in order to check what was going on, I think. <laughs> um, I'll watch it back and realize the S again was being stupid. No doubt that is correct. We can. Give it some values. Okay, okay so, so let's, let's have step C A return um, a, a different value. So, so let's, let's just do like a, a wandering sequence with um, a math at random. Let's, let's give it like 36 values. So that's going to be 36 integers. integers. And then let's divide it by 12. So, so that's going to give us equal, type, equal standard equal temperament. Oh, and currently this is being applied to the amplitude rather than the pitch. So, Ooh, we could apply it to both. All right, now we now we're wiggling. Um. And let's, let's, let's pass in some time values. So... I shouldn't use... Let's just use the variable t to represent time. So we're hearing it's like wiggling around like this. It's like super strange sounding. That's because we're using the exponential shape. Uh, so let's change that. We can go we'll go back to linear. It sounds kind of similar, but, um, but we can also do other stuff. We can do uh, now. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. So now's a now's a cool one. It, it lets you go. Uh, this is two independent instances of MacroSeq. Um, but this this call now, um, it basically says immediately jump to the new location and then wait until the end of the time. Um, ultimately, you can use wait, and it'll have the same effect. Um, except that it's going to wait and then jump at the end. So it basically means you can write square waves and stuff like that uh, as a single stage rather than um, like a single stage and then a state transition rather than having to write go to this location, stay there, go to that location, stay there. Um, 
But I think now is really useful um, to write sequences because it means that you um, you can just think of the time co the time part of an ASL two as just being um, it's like the duration of a stage. Okay. Um, so rather than it being, oh, we could do a random sequence and then switch. So uh, step sequence A this is going to be random sequence. Um, let's make step sequence B um, a like minus seven arpeggio, and we'll do it kind of similar way we did before, where. Um, min 7, does anybody know these numbers? 3, 7, 10, we'll do the 9 as well. think that I don't need a paren like brackets here. So this is like a shortcut to basically increment and wrap. Um, but first we want to use it. Oh, we don't have to. We can just return it. And all we're going to do is we're going to return min7 indexed by m7 ah. this music is like an anxiety for me so it's like I have to get it right <laughs> uh, we're gonna use that as our index and then we're gonna divide it by 12 to get equal temperament again but we haven't and we haven't solved it yet so um Let's get 20 stages of this. So this is interesting. We, we have a... This actually sounds really nice to me. But, um... Because we're using this same... We're applying this same sequence to both the pitch and the volume. Um, like we have it applied to output 1 and output 2. Um, output 1 and output 2. It means that these functions up here, um, step seek A and step seek B, are both being called uh, like in both both output contexts. Um, so let's just change one of them. Let's change. Let's do three over four. Right, so one thing you'll note here, and this is something I do a lot, uh, this is taking two different ASLs and having their time constants like related. Um, so the macro seek is going to have a step length of 0 0.3 
three seconds, whereas the LFO is going to have a loop of 0.4. So every four, every, is it every 12th note? Anyway, they phase against each other in a nice way. Um, so what's happening here is we have, I think we should have 20 steps of the arpeggio, and now we have a single step of the randomness. Let's add 10 stages of randomness. Yeah. I like this. All I want to do is make it twice as fast. So we could do that stuff in real time as well, uh, just by changing. We could wrap T. Yeah, let's do this. So we're gonna make a a global variable called TT. Um, there's gonna be in. Uh, I don't know. This is like a homage to Teletype. <laughs> um, it's going to be a number, and then here we can just say TT times three, and TT times four. So point one. This is an entirely different thing to what I'm doing. That's going to make the, the, two, <laughs> the two halves of the sequence different. Um, which is fine. That's okay. I'm doing the wrong thing here, but that's okay. It sounds kind of nice. So let's just like, let's just roll with it. Um, anyway, I feel like this is like a nice little place to end. Alpha 2 is feeding the air of mangrove, and alpha 1 is the pitch, yeah. It's not a low pass filter, but like, uh, it's also being passed through assistance, so. Which is doing like three, it's doing the three uh, form events. What's causing the one note to like go to the next one really fast? Oh, that's the, that's the phasing. So the notes are changing instantly. Um, if I turn down the air, that's the sequence of notes. Um, and then, yeah, the different, the different rates. So it's kind of like they phase and there's a point where it catches it at the transition between notes. That's why it's doing that. This is fun. I, I've like barely used this times construct. So this is, I appreciate y'all for helping. Um, I'm going to do one thing here. Um, 
311 possibilities. Patience. Oh, that's going to solve the music. That's really sad. So, uh... This is the sneak peek, the sneak preview. Uh, so I've been working on like a, um, a kind of automatic um, quantizer. I'm going to absolutely forget what the syntax is for this, so forgive me. Um, maybe I can make a Chromium browser. Will that work on this? Oh, I probably created it on this. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, sick, because I'm on that. Nice. Uh, yeah, okay, that looks good. Let's try it again. Uh, Bowery Twitch. Turn it down. Yeah, we're back. Cool. Okay. I'm sorry that we lost the background. Um, this. Whoa. This is why I hate having a mouse. It's so dumb. Who needs it? We're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap up in a minute, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit here. So this is some stuff that uh, I've been working on. Um, it's currently still it's not the design isn't finished yet, so it's a bit of a strange thing. But I'm just bringing it up so that we can look at the syntax while trying it out. I haven't used this yet. Uh, Dan Dan's been doing some testing with it and has made some great sounding things. So let's see if we can create something half fun. I kind of want to, let's, let's leave this existing thing going and let's make a new one, right? Um, so we're just going to do it with an LFO. Um, and let's make it like a nice long two seconds LFO. Um, so rather than worry too much about like explicit notes like we were doing with the with this macro seek, uh, rather than yeah, so in that we were kind of explicitly saying like do this note then this note, and we had to have a manual counter to go through. Um, instead. This concept, um, I'm not sure of the naming of it yet. It's like somewhere between a quantizer and a, like an absolute value lookup table. Um, I lived inside GitHub. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's weird, but let's just let's just write it so that this makes some sense. Output three, scale zero. Two, four, seven, nine. I think that's a major pentatonic scale in 12 tap. Okay, so that should still be running. Let's get another voice happening. Um. Oh, 
Alright, it's working, but uh, there is something about this that makes no sense. Okay, let's let's not do an LFO. We're gonna write it, we're gonna do it in the command line. Um, and what I'm gonna do for a second is uh, output one is our pitch. And I'm gonna set it to zero volts. Um, so I can tune the two oscillators together. drift a bit, but we'll work. Um, so let's try output 3. And we're gonna... Let's just use the, the volts thing, and let's give it a slew time of 1. Yeah. So what that is, is it's a a two slope, and as it's as it's moving, it gets locked to the scale set that we provide on this line here. So we need to call this function for this this output dot scale. Um, this syntax is probably going to change, so don't get too excited about it as is. Um, but that's that. And let's uh, let's run it again. We can let's use a just for the less adventurous. Let's use a, a matched uh, scale. Nine. What's the eleven? Does anybody know? Five, twelve, seventeen. So we get some uh, some movement, uh, and I'll put this in here instead. Uh, and let's go. Is five going to be too weird? Probably. But so what? Oh, we'll, we'll align it with the pitch sequence. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
There's definitely something weird happening here. Something weird. Mm-hmm. 
If I slow it down, maybe it will be clearer. Let's add a zero to the two. Scales here, we can do a different line on this. Um, modular by the length of S plus one. Then we can add extra scales. So, what about? I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I'm just uh, going to read these comments and then we'll see what happens. Ooh, nice scale. sound like it. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's still micro tuning. Uh, in terms of whether scale goes above 12, you can put it in, but maybe basically what it's doing is remapping the octave. And there's some extra support to do uh, 
volt per octave versus like 1.2 volts, but you can also do two volts and then you can write like kind of double octave scales. Um, there's an example in in the GitHub. But that'll all be clearer when it's like finished and we talk, we like announce it all. Oh, the chippy up portion is because it's doing a really quick uh, two slope. Um, so it's like zapping over a bunch of different quantize points. And it's all, it's like being, the quantizer is being applied at audio rate. So you'll get, you could do like full 10 octave sweeps and get every single note um, if it's like 0.1 or a second. The scale is not sorted, so you can, you can like, uh, you can like, confuse it. Remapping exactly. Cool. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to tune, I'm going to turn off the screen recording. Uh, I'll stop recording at least. You can keep chatting. D does anybody know if, uh, if I stop the if I stop the stream, does that kill the, the chat? Uh, no, the loop's being uh, just started by the init. Um, this is, that, that is what's starting the sequence, and then it self triggers. Chat will persist. There we go. Alright, well thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I'm, I'm super into doing it again if, uh, if this has been useful. We don't have to just talk about ASL, um, but this just felt like a underutilized and like not very well documented system. So I wanted to kind of give an outline of how it all fits together and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm super, I'm really interested to talk about other stuff like analog design or kind of more, um, more codey code, <laughs> less scripting stuff, if that's interesting. Um, I don't know, just uh, send me a DM or um, leave a comment, send an Instagram message, whatever. I'm sure that you can comment on the lines thread. Um, but yeah, uh, this has been great. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm glad that it wasn't a, a complete failure. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'll post up this uh, twitch.lua file. Um, so that you, where is my keyboard? Um, so that you can uh, use it if you want. I'll put it on a, a gist maybe, I'll do that right now and then uh, I'll stop the recording there.